Check this out. Hey guys, welcome to Sip and Spillin'. I am Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when you're ready. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Sippin' and Spillin' with Sid and Mike from Three Mississippi. I did it! It took me three tries, just for the record. Three? I had four. I had to I had to clip the beginning of this video. She does Frankie math. I got everything wrong. But anyway, I finally got through a successful intro, so yay! Uh, it's a Sunday here for us because we always film Sippin' and Spillin's Monday on Sunday after church and Sunday lunch and all that. So uh, we're out here. I still got my church boots on. He still has his church boots on because it started to rain in and so he If I was limber I'd show them to you. That's but I don't feel like going to the yeah. doctor. He was gonna get home and start working on the the next phase of the coop, but it was kind of spitting out and yeah. uh, he was like I'm not convinced of whether it's a good idea to uncover materials and take know, tools so out there and then have it immediately start raining. Yeah. So we're we're gonna I just hold off a little bit, but that's all right. Uh you know, it happens. It's fine. And then Frankie had her solo at church today, so he was watching the replay. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, you know, our church... I mean, he was there. <laughs> he wasn't, yeah. He wasn't there. Our, but our church also uh, streams live on Facebook, so I also went and watched that stream because I wanted to see it as many times from as many angles with as many different recording <laughs> devices, devices as possible. Yeah. So she did great. She nailed it. Yeah, she did very well. Yeah. We, um, did, we did give her a hard time, though, because she was... Her friend sits next to her in choir, and occasionally they duck down behind their pew, and then they pop back up. And then they... Or, their, or, or you know, <laughs> or Brother they're, Brian is, like, in the middle of, <laughs> you know, reading the scripture, and they're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> like... I'm like, Frankie, yeah, come here. Like, hey, we watch this. You. <laughs> we don't notice it when we're in church because we're focused on... I noticed it. I haven't noticed it in church. I'm... I'm you know, focus on what's happening, and I don't, I'm not paying attention to her, but when you see the zoom in of, she's sitting right behind Brother Brian, it's, it's like, oh, it's Pretty very obvious. obvious, yeah, so we had to, we had to pull her in there and be like, okay, knock this off, <laughs> yeah, so, and not only do we see you, Jesus sees you, yeah, <laughs> talking during sermon, so anyway, that's it, she's a very fidgety person, though, I don't know where she gets that from. Like, like, seriously, I watched, I, I basically watched the entire replay. So I went to church twice today. Essentially. And she's back, she's sitting back there behind him, right? And he's, he's doing his thing, right? And I'm listening to him and I didn't, wasn't fully noticing her during the actual sermon. I noticed her a couple times. But in the replay, I was watching her, not him. And she's like, she's sitting back there. <laughs> she was playing with her goatee? <laughs> no, I added that for her. But no, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was funny. And not funny. And not funny. <laughs> yeah. So, cause we just, I just never noticed it before. Like, cause we're not, we, we're sitting far enough away from the angle. We don't see her as much, I guess. But when it right. zoomed in, when you watch the replay, it's like. Yeah, it's zoomed in on, on like his, like, you know, like, chest and shoulders and head yeah. and her head's right there. Yeah, behind so him. it's real obvious. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I noticed it in the, in the deer blind too, when we hunt, you know, we'll be sitting there and I'll occasionally like, you know, reach down and pick up a water and, uh, or, you know, whatever. But for the most part, I'm sitting there and I'm just head on a swivel. I'm just looking, right? No noise. And then occasionally I want to look behind me where your clothes make a little bit of noise when you, you know, reposition to look behind you and then over there and then back to here. Okay, now, for any of y'all that have spent any amount of time in a deer blind or a deer stand or just generally trying to be super quiet, part of why we're being quiet isn't necessarily because we don't want the deer to hear us. Well, that's part of it. Part of it is also because when we're quiet, we can listen. And your clothes make noise when you're doing this or rubbing your pants, right? Like they, so, but when I'm sitting there and I'm super quiet, 
I can hear leaves creaking. I'm like, oh, it's a squirrel over there. I hear something over there. Uh, like I heard that deer grunt behind us mm -hmm. the day the deer snuck up on us, you know? But Frankie can't stop moving for even one minute. Oh, girl's got ants in her pants. In that blind. <laughs> and I'm trying to explain to her, Frankie, all that noise that your clothing is making while you're over here just like dancing the jig in the deer blind is not loud enough <laughs> for a deer to hear. I get that. But it's loud enough to prevent you from being able to hear. Like literally, the only way you're going to kill a deer is if either I see it and tell you about it or it comes and knocks on the blind and says, hey, I'm here. Because she's not, <laughs> she's not focused on what's going Maybe on out there. part of the reason that she's gotten stung so far, but I don't know. No, because I've been with her and... Been yeah. no yeah. days, but know, it's it's hilarious. She just cannot. She can't hold still. But she's a good kid. She's a good kid. She's a great kid. She just can't sit still. Yeah, I'm not mad at her about it. I'm no. just. I think it's funny. Yeah, it's kind of funny. So I don't know. I don't even know. That's not what we were planning on talking about. Well, today. I mean, you moved your seed table, so I thought maybe you were going to talk about your seeds, but I don't know. Well, the seeds is definitely. A project that's, that's about to start, uh, probably, well, I've got a, I got some deer butchery that needs to happen probably tonight, uh, but between tonight and tomorrow and the next couple of days, I'm planning on starting a ton of seeds, and I'll be filming that, and kind of, Mississippi. yeah, I'll be adding that to the, what uh, we're calling the food bank series, the food bank series on Three Mississippi, and talking about that, but I just, you know, I can't stress enough to anybody how important it is um, to buy seeds and to have seeds. I mean, I could show you an example of, I mean, look at this okra right here. This okra, let me see if I've got a last year's okra. Hold on. Talk to the people. I'm going to. So he's, a lot of his seeds, he has saved from plants that have done well over the years and he's propagated his own seeds and stored them and then planted them subsequently after that um, and has had relatively good luck with that. Um, it's also, of course, economical because you're not then having to go out and purchase more seeds and especially right now, the cost of seeds has gone up along with a lot of other things. Um, but I actually just finished watching Tim from Ridge Life. Um, he's he did another video of things that he thinks uh and he actually he mentioned us in the video that you know he knew we had kind of started this series um but two things that he does that we have not ever done um one of which we want to do one of which is like we'd like to do but i don't know when we get around to it but he does um uh meat rabbits which is the one thing that uh we've always said yeah we're gonna add this next year and then it got turned into the next year because other things happened and took priority and then we ended up moving. So we haven't ever started rabbits, um, but probably we will in the next couple years once we get a little more settled here and get some things established. That would definitely be something that we're gonna be adding uh, because you get amazing fertilizer out of them. You get the skins if you so choose to go that route as well as a really good protein rich food. Um, so, and then there's a quick turnaround time. You can have a, you know, they can, they can, uh, have kits every, you know, every month you can go through relatively quick cycles. And then of course he's got his honeybees, which you get obviously honey and wax and you can make fermented and make mead, which is always a good time. And, and there's good reasons for having that. And, and anyway, so if you haven't gone and checked out uh, Tim from Ridge Life, you should go do that, but hundred percent. Yeah. I have to say that a lot now because I watched a movie last night where he said 100% a lot and it was they were kind of making fun of New Yorkers. Oh. Uh, so check this out, guys. Look at that ochre right there, okay? $21.45 for one ounce, which is a good size packet, by the way, uh, of jambalaya ochre. That's about double what it was this time last year. And it's only going up. It's only getting worse. Now here, th this this will trick you a little bit, and I'm not beating up on this particular brand either. Uh, don't think that I am, uh, because I like this brand. But I want you to look at this is this year's 
collards, and this is last year's collards, okay? So this year's collards are $3.25, and last year's collards were $3.85, and I'm like, yeah, okay, not bad, right? Except for, look, this year's collards, $3.25 for one gram. Last year's, $3.85 for four grams. There's been a lot of seeds. I've heard people say four that. times yeah. more expensive. Yeah. And you know, here's some tomatoes that I bought last year. Old German slicing tomatoes, four dollars and ninety-five cents. Oh, here's some that I bought this year, ten dollars and eighty-five cents. Eight dollars and fifty-five cents. See, the price of seeds is going up, and honestly. Uh, I don't see it coming down. In fact, I see it continuing to go up for another couple of years. You guys need to buy some seeds. You need to figure out, you know. And if you're to the level where you can, you know, save and store your own seeds, I feel like that should be incorporated. Yeah, okay, so here's an example right here. Here's a bunch of stuff that I harvested from my own peppers last year. Trinidad Butch Tea Scorpions, Ahi Pineapple, Pichadu Pepper, Pikachu. and uh, Buena Mulata Peppers. Now, these, these you, you're not even gonna find these at, in fact, you're not gonna find any of these on Territorial Seeds. You're not gonna find any of these on Johnny Seeds, like the big ones that you normally buy from. They're, they're you know, they're more specialty. and. You know, the, the Buena Mulatas are awesome for pickling, the the Trinidads, and uh, and the, oh, I don't have any of the, uh, there might be one you the Bujolokias, like yeah. Anyway, you know, those are great for making hot sauce and hot peppers. The Ahi Pineapple and the Pichadus, so good. They're, they're sweeter they're peppers pretty. with a little bit of, tiny bit of heat, but anyway. Bottom line is, if you can find those seeds, expect to pay a lot of money. Like, you know, four, three, four, five times more than they were a year ago or two years ago. So, um, more than that, it's really difficult to find them. So, you know, I every year I'm harvesting more of my own seeds. Pretty much anything that's open pollinated, it's it's difficult to harvest reliable seeds from hybrids from F ones. Uh, which is a lot of what you're going to buy out there. Um, see, yeah, so like this is jambalaya okra, you know, that's an F1. So the bummer about that is if I harvest seeds from that okra, uh, it, I'm not going to reliably get the same plant. Right, the same plant with the, with the same, the fruit, you know, the, the, the actual um, pods are not going to, be consistent because a hybrid is a hybrid and it takes several years to stabilize it. But I do have one pepper that was an F1 that's a cayenne that I love. It was, it's like the best cayenne. Um, so I am trying to stabilize that. And the way I'm doing that is I'm taking seeds from last year's best pepper off of the best, healthiest plant. All the properties that I like. That plant did the best. Uh, into the cold. It did the best when it was the hottest outside. Uh, it did the best when the ground started to dry out in between waterings, which peppers like anyway. It had the best yield of peppers on it and the best shape, size, and flavor of peppers. So I take a pepper off of that plant and I take all the seeds out of it and I save them. Then I plant like 15 or 20 of those seeds the following year. And out of all of those plants, I find the one that stayed consistent, right? Then I harvest seeds from that. And after about four or five generations, you're pretty stable. So, you know, you can do that with an F1. It, it's time consuming, but hey, you're planting stuff anyway, right? So, and that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where I'm capturing more of my own seeds from the things that we like to, to eat. I haven't been doing that with squash yet, but I will this year. 
Haven't really done it with radishes because I just never let radishes go to seed, you know? Um, you lose the radish by doing that, but uh, it's a smart thing to do and I'll be doing that this year. So, you know, let's progress to the point where we're harvesting our own seeds, learning how to, like some seeds you have to, you kind of ferment them, like uh, with tomatoes. You've got that gel sack around the outside of the seed uh, that's designed to kind of protect that seed and prevent it from germinating until conditions are right for it then to germinate. Uh, but you can, you can put them in a little jar and cover it and kind of go through a, a short fermentation process and then clean those off and dry them out and it's not that big a deal. So, and I did it to a lot of tomatoes last year mm -hmm. and I have those. So seeds, man, seeds are just, you know, they're, they're, they're hedging against hunger, the starvation, right? I mean, ultimately you have to have a plan for planting those seeds and growing that food and harvesting that food and consuming it for your body. But uh, you gotta start with the seeds and seeds are getting, they're getting, the, they're, they're getting challenging and they're getting financially uh, challenging to get. So yes. that's a little bit of a rant there, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, that's so okay. I'll shut up now and let you talk for a little while. Oh, I'm on? Oh, one more thing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, shoot, I don't know. What do you want me to say now? You got all, you got all, uh, you did like a filibuster on your seeds. I don't know what know. to talk about, but yeah, so, uh, let's see, Friday's video will likely be, um, the next in our food bank series. It was actually supposed to be this Sunday's video, but with the weather being what it was, they wanted to take advantage of the good weather outside and be able to make some progress on the chicken coop. So we kind of yeah. had to change our plans a little bit, uh, with that. That's why we posted the chicken coop video, video on Three Mississippi yesterday today because, yeah. For them yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this Friday's video will be getting back to the, the food series and this first one will be about talking about seeds. About planting them planting specifically. Planting yeah. and that kind of stuff. I'll go over my equipment, what I use. I'll go over what a pared down basic setup might be. Talk a little bit about heat mats and why and when to use them. You don't always need them. Not all plants want heat to germinate. In fact, then, some it's bad. Yeah, but then let us know because um, there's some things that we have ideas about that we want to talk about in this, what we're calling the food bank series, where we kind of talk about some things to keep in mind for being a little bit more prepared and self-sufficient uh, and self-reliant in all types of situations, but including, you know, the potential for, you know, things being expensive right now and potential shortages of things and just you know, planning for worst case scenario. We have some ideas of some things that we definitely want to talk to you guys about, but if there's something specific that you guys think we should definitely include, drop it down below in a comment for us and let us know, um, you know, what you think. If there's something that you haven't heard anybody touch base on, um, you know, maybe that's something we can get into that, you know. I mean, if we need to do some videos on, on pressure canning, uh, you know, we, we can do that. We've done them in the past, but we've gotten better at, not only at doing that, well, but also at documenting already, yeah, and, and, and doing you know, that. we've yeah. gotten better at capturing that and, and editing a, a video that makes more sense. So, um, <laughs> over, the, over time, because she's the one editing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, those are all things <clears throat> I've got, uh, one idea, some notes on my desk about some non food items that I feel like should be part of the food pantry and why, you know, so. Uh, I'm kind of scratching that one out as a, uh, you know, as an idea that I'm kind of working out some, some concepts on if there's enough material there to have a video about it or if I need to just include it in another one. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. We might, you know, put a few items together and talk about the importance of them. And, you know, everybody has their different take on kind of what they think is important to have or what they absolutely can't live without or what they think you need to know how to do. And so again, just keep in mind guys that this is what we look at as important. This is what we're sharing with you guys. Other people might have different ideas or might disagree altogether and that's fine. Uh, you know, some, some people, there's things that they rather focus on and they'll forget totally about, you know, they don't, they don't worry about water because they live by a lake, so they don't care and right. whatever, you know, so it's fine. Like it's to each their own. Um, and you want to do the but, things that you enjoy too. Right. You know, but I think that overall it's a good idea to have like a well-balanced, like 
overview game plan of some things that you want to keep in your rotation of your not only your skill set but what you also have on hand and i think that's some of what we're going to touch on uh in that series but if there's like i said if there's something specific that you guys are like oh man i'm dying for somebody to talk about this or to show me how to do x y and z drop in the comments below and if it's something that's in our wheelhouse or something we agree with then we'll we'll maybe do a video on that one too yeah yeah and, or it might be something that we just haven't done yet and we're like we you know we, we should do that i like we We've talked about rabbits for several years. For we several just, years, and we, haven't we done did, it. We talked about rabbits and quail. We did do quail, but we didn't. Then never got to the rabbits. Yeah. The first, we we're going to do rabbits first, and then get to quail. But circumstances happened as they did. We ended yeah. up with quail <laughs> right. and not rabbits. Um, but that's okay. Like sometimes. Well, but we will. Happens. I mean, we will. Yeah. we will get to the point where we're doing meat rabbits, uh, yeah. probably similar to what. Uh, what Tim I really at like Ridge Tim's Life setup. is doing. Yeah, Tim yeah, at Ridge Life. Yeah, I he's do, got a good setup. I do like his setup over there. I'm, I'm going to fact sure check you know. his statistics on uh, on the meat produced from one breeding pair over the course of a year. Um, yeah, it was like 600 pounds. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I, I mean, if that is accurate, and I'm sure it is because Tim is an honest guy, um, well, I mean, that's a game changer. It's every 30 days, and it's, you know, depending on the breed, anywhere between 6 to 12 kits. Man, that and is they, just you know, constant. That's like, yeah, yeah that and is a game changer. Got their yeah, you're and constantly, got yeah. <laughs> constantly producing, yeah. you know, animal food, protein. Yeah. And then amazing fertilizer for your garden that can be used. Yeah. You don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to compost it. It's ready to go. So that's, right. that's a cool feature of, of the rabbit. And then you, if you're so inclined to get artsy and craftsy, I mean, you got the, the skins you can do with too. I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of stuff, so it's, you know, I mean, it is what it is. We'll see. See if we ever get to that point where I'm making, like, we keep, rabbit yeah, we, skin hats. We keep saying we're going to do rabbits this year. We keep saying we just haven't. Like, every we, year had, we, we had a couple pet rabbits, but they were not meat rabbits. Right. Um, but, so eventually we'll get we that We'll have no more pet rabbits. Yeah, no, that was I don't like, remember how we wound up with it's, That's a whole other story. Somebody told Sid they had animals that, that they that needed, were, that needed a home. And, yeah. And yeah, they, yeah. Sid gave them a home. That's pretty much what happened. I have to, I have to try to, I have to, first of all, I have to know about it because, you know, she'll ask for forgiveness before she'll ask for permission. That's true. That's, that's her MO. But that's okay. Is it? The, the, well, the animals make me happy. It's always worked out for you, hasn't it? Well, <laughs> they never did anything bad to you that you know of. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Uh, we hope you have a, a blessed rest of your week here. We will see you tomorrow. Here on Sippin' and Spillin', where we would try not to kill each other yet again. <laughs> it's chilly it's in cold. here right now. I'm like, I'm fidgety now after all that time. I think it's it's, it's in the low 40s. It's chilly today. I mean, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's chilly. And I gotta I gotta take Frankie back to church because we got we got stuff to do. So anyway, it's 54 degrees on top of this heat mat over here. Yeah, it's chilly. Well, I thought we were saying goodbye. What are we yeah. doing? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the heck is in here. Let me take this I don't probe know if it off. matters. It's chilly. It's warmer in here than it is outside, but not by a whole lot. That probe was sitting on top of the heat mat, and it was 54 yeah. degrees. It's so a little chilly. It's chilly. It's, it's, yeah, it's not the end of the world. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We will see you tomorrow again here on Sipping and Spilling. <laughs>